Hey y'all, happy Friday. Happy preparation for your Sabbath. It's the weekend, baby. Anyway, you guys know on Fridays, I like to give you guys something to do that's gonna help you prosper in your near future, right? And earlier, you guys, I um, spoke to you guys about being a harlot, right? Or the people you know who are harlots, you know, those females who have to make their bodies like playgrounds, you know, any and everybody can play with it, right? You know, so I read, um, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, you know, what the Father says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a heart? God forbid. So, of course, you guys, we do know that the Father forbids females being heartless, right? Now, there are several definitions, definitions of a heart, you guys, and you can get the best definition from um, Zonovan's pictorial bible dictionary let me show you guys this this is great a great reference they even got the hebrew letters whatever you want to know about the you know the disciples whatever you get this zondervan's pictorial bible dictionary it will help you thoroughly okay right so i just wanted to just give you guys a definition of what the um this uh bible dictionary says about a harley because a harley can be considered many things on the ancient times and that was different words for different kinds of harleys right now it says Harley. Oh, by the way, a Harley is also a prostitute. <laughs> Even though you want to consider yourself one, you're a prostitute. Okay. Right. It says Harley, a prostitute. Which kind of woman is designated by four terms in the Old Testament, right? So that means the Old Testament got four terms in this Harley, giving you different, def different definitions, right? Now, the first one is, it says Zona. Now, Zona, the regular word for harlot and the most frequently used, right? And that's the Zona, Z-O-N-A-H, is the regular word for harlot and the most frequently used, right? Then, number two is called Kadasha. Now, this is a special kind of harlot, a religious prostitute. That is, a priestess of a heathen religion in which fornication was part of the worship, right? Mentioned only four times, but three of those references are in Genesis 38, 21, and 22, Deuteronomy 23, 17. Okay? And uh, three, uh, well, the, the third one is Isha Zarah or Zara alone, and that is considered a strange woman, occurs only in the book of Proverbs, and the way it is used there, shows that a harlot is meant. <laughs> is that something? Like, they needed that harlot, okay? And number four, the last and final one, it was called Nokurai, right? And that is basically a foreign or a strange woman found in this form also only in the book of Harley, and it obviously means a harlot, right? Okay, so of course we got four of them, right? So we got one, the prostitute, you know, we got the religious one, the strange woman, you know, but remember the harlot deals with allowing your body to be a playground or allowing yourself to be an escort, you know, allowing yourself to be a prostitute. All these things are still a harlot, right? And even if you're going around, open your legs and have about seven baby daddies, you don't think that's a harlot? You know, um, you don't feel like that you holding your royal oath. You don't feel like that you just allowed your body to be played with by all these different men that produce all these different children out of wedlock, you know. And now, and for the most part, most of them know who their daddy is, don't know who their daddy is. And they, you know, trying to wonder where the dad is, right? And also, um, being that, you know, you just open yourself up and allow yourself all these unplanned pregnancies also, you know, brings about problems throughout the future because of decisions you make with your body, right? And remember, um, the body, uh, like sexual immortality with the body is a different kind of sin altogether, right? You got your regular sins, right? But anything with your body is a different kind of sin. It is considered sexual immortality and it's a sin against the body. And, and what that means is because it's a sin against the body, it brings you health problems. It brings you diseases. It brings you unplanned um, pregnancy out of wedlock. You know, just, just, you know, stuff, you know, that you wouldn't even have to deal with had you made the right decision or just allowed yourself to submit to a husband, one husband. Allow that person to love you, you know, and, and not thinking that your body, you know, is just made for everybody, right? Because every time you letting people come into you, those are your soul ties. So everybody that's going in, you putting different spirits and just making you crazy, okay? And then sometimes they putting STDs in you. Sometimes they putting C's in you. Sometimes they putting mental problems in you, right? It, it, it all leads to perishing, right? Just, just think about it. Being submissive and having a great husband, one person that loves you, 
brings about prosperity, you know, economic value, a great family, richness. You know, you don't have to worry about all these health problems. You don't have to worry about all these unplanned pregnancies. You know, you see the difference, you know, and just allowing one man to love you, allowing yourself to submit one man and doing it the right way. How much more valuable and possible your life can be opposed to you allowing your body to be a playground and letting Tom, Dig, Harry, Rashawn, and anybody else come play with it. Right? So, remember, the father forbids a holly, right? You know, he don't, you know, because all of our bodies are a member of the Christ. All of us is one, okay? And, you know, again, you know, he says that, no, ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Well, this came from Corinthians, okay, of course. Um, Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a holly? God forbid. So, you guys see God forbid, right? Anyway, he read the much, basically, you know, he, he loves celibacy. So he's saying, if you don't, you know, have a husband right now, you know, or, you know, if you're not trying to get a husband, then, you know, then just be celibate. I know you still going around and allowing yourself to be a playground. You tear your body down. You tear your mind down. And the kids you bring in the world is going to, like, just going to face a bunch of trauma. Because, well, most of the women who have seven and eight kids have, like, seven and eight baby daddies. And then the kids don't even have the dad. So what that do? That cause drama. And it cause a repeat state for that child, that female child, to go do the same thing, to feel like it's okay to open herself and make herself a playground too. Just like the mama. Because whether you know it or not, our daughters learn from us. You know, they become us all over again. So whatever we do, they learn it from, right? So either we're going to raise them the right way so they can go down a righteous path and have a prosperous and a great future, or we're going to raise them the wrong way and feel like all they got to do is let somebody play with them, play with their body all day, you know, and get nothing out of it and become nothing, be traumatized, you know, health going down, possibly catching disease and possibly have all these unplanned pregnancies out of wedlock. You know? So... Again, you guys, that's just saying that the father forbids a holly, you guys. And, you know, it's not good to be a holly because it, it makes you look bad. It makes your body look bad. You know, you start getting bitter because you realize you keep on giving your body to everybody. Now, doing your younger years, you didn't give everybody your body right now. You know, you're getting older and now you're becoming desperate. Because believe you me, when you get about 40 years old, don't never think it ain't going to come and hunt you. You're going to be sitting in that bed, lonely and miserable, wanting and wishing a man was there beside you. But what they said, you can hit the wall now, especially if you haven't taken care of yourself and preserved yourself. And I'm not saying that you can't get somebody at 40, 50, and 60 because it's possible. Trust and believe me. It is possible. I mean, I got my husband in my late 40s. You see what I'm saying? So it's possible. It's just about it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. You know, and like I said, I compromised, I prayed, I stopped men things just to get them. You understand? So don't ever think it's just, you know, it's over with for you. But if you start submitting yourself correctly to the Father and and um, trying to, and you know, um, seeking the kingdom first, then and ask him. He'll give them to you, but he ain't going to give them to you if you are harlot. He ain't going to give them to you if you don't try to submit yourself to him, right? So if you're thinking in your mind that, okay, I'm, fin I'm just going to stop sleeping with these guys, you know, I'm just, now I'm just going to lay back, you know, I'm going to hang out this person, this person, that person, this person, you know, you're still not giving your time to submit because submit is me giving yourself a long time to the Father. Only submitting to him and not nobody right now. So when you come out them playground stages, right, and you feel like you're ready, you know, you know, you know, I'm tired. I'm gone. I'm finna, I want to go ahead and push forward because I do want to be married. When you finally come to the conclusion that 40 years old, then it don't mean, okay, I, I can still just go out and do all this and play around. It don't mean that. It means sit down in the house. Give yourself some time, some time alone with the father. That's, the, that's how you're going to get it. That's how you're going to learn. Because if you don't give yourself no time, then you just be vulnerable from one man to the next man, this man, next man. Every time you look one man, you go to another because you become needy. And because of all the men that dropped all their semen in you, you get a little crazy, right? And now, because that didn't drop your semen in you, they don't even want you no more, right? Now, you just with a thousand men, just a complete pay playground. Thinking that you the queen and your vagina is the queen of everything. And like it don't depreciate. It depreciate. It goes down. It catch diseases. You know, it, it, it causes you to get hysterectomies, myomectomies, all kind of stuff. Whether you guys believe it or not. Having sex like that and allowing yourself a playground. That's why the females come with all these fibroids. We may not know that, but they may say it's me. But trust and believe me. Them fibroids be coming for, from sexual immortality. And it took me to learn just by reading the Bible, you know, when um when the Messiah was walking in, you know, uh, down through Judea and a young lady had this bleeding problem for 12 years and 
and um she touched the hem of the messiah's you know um wearing you know his you know the the the, 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 crook, the cloak the, the cloak that he had on right thing that covered she touched the hem of it and, and healed her that lady had fibroids you know she had fibroids have been bleeding for years okay fibroids is very common and a lot of women have had fibroids and even including myself one time in my life you know um but you learn that you know when you're young, you don't have all this fun. Then take the time to think, okay, well, I'm young. I'm having fun. I'm just wild. But not thinking all them things you're doing while you're young, having fun, it really catches up with you. And then you wonder when you get old, like, what is wrong with me now? Dang, I ain't got no ex to get nothing. But, man, I'm coming on my cycle, and the cycle lasts too long, and now I got a fibroid. But what that come from, that is sexual mortality. Why you can end up with these fibroids, bad fibroids, you know, or hysterectomy or myomectomy you know because there's so many females right now got myomectomies i mean and, and hysterectomy so young so young their body is just tore down because why sexual immortality the sin against the body they allow so many people to play their body like it's a playground until their vagina is shut down on right this vagina part they got too many diseases they had too many kids it ain't healthy no more and nothing about you is healthy no more you weird because you're lonely you know and you feel then you're desperate and then and that's what happens so you guys i'm telling you you can do all that stuff while you're young right now and you know go out and listen and do that because trust and believe me when i was young a teenager Trust and believe me, my cousin told me the truth. You got to spend me money. Yeah, I love to spend money. I was going to shopping spree, spending many people money. I told my cousin, girl, I'm too young to think about trying to marry or settle down. Of course, she got married and been married ever since. But if, if I had that mentality she had then, I probably, I would have been married too. I had the opportunity to be married when I was younger. No, I wanted to have fun and I wanted to go on shopping spree and spend people money. I, I love spending me and they love to take me shopping when I was younger. Yes, I, I was getting the finer things and that's what I was about. Yes, I was a true gold digger when I was younger. Did not take consideration that when I got 40 years old, I was going to be sitting here crying to God, ask for a husband. Completely crying to God. Please send me somebody. You understand? Because, oh my goodness, I, I'm tired. I can't keep carrying this water up. Oh, I'm tired. I can't, I'm getting tired, Father. I can't keep doing this on my own now. Okay, I have been alone now for so long. Now in my 40s, this is a problem. This is a problem. I should have made a decision when I was younger, but I didn't. You see, so we have to be careful, you know, but I, I, I thank God that he saved me. He blessed me. He still got me. And it took a lot to get there, but I sacrificed. I didn't compromise and I sacrificed. He sent it to me. And I said, a straight God said, somebody who pray with me, get on his knees with me, love God like I love somebody who teaches me and leads me and guides me and actually raised me. I need him. You understand? And if I lose that man right now today. I don't even know what to do. You don't even know you need somebody until the father sent into your life. That's the crazy part about it. You don't even know that you really needed that person until he comes to your life. And then when they come to you and, and they show you how much of a leader and protector and security and God, how much they love you, you'll be like, oh my goodness, father. I can't lose him. If I lose him, I might lose myself. And that's what it is for me because the person the father sent to my life now, now, you know, even though I'm 40, he's sent to me, you know, but I still kept myself up. You understand? I preserve myself. You understand? Let me see everything. I preserve myself. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to seek this kingdom because if I seek the kingdom, the father going to give me my desires. That's exactly what he did. But he just give me any man. He sent me a God fearing. It was a God sin, you know, and can't no man have I ever dated compared to him. Not one. In the whole world. Right now, I don't think I can meet another man that can compare to him. In this whole world. You want to know why? Because he was sent specifically for me. Was made for me, you know. And went in, don't get me wrong, he done his little prison time and everything. But the guy's like a whole angel. Was uh, helping the home. I mean, helping the handicap. And there came out, still helped the homeless. You know, and it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's like, okay. And that's what I prayed for. But I got it, you know, by being celibate. You know, um, just... You know, seeking the Father, asking Him, and not leaning on my own understanding. You know, use my body as a playground, just sleeping with Tom, Dick, and Harry, hoping somebody gonna love me and be with me. But I'm not doing nothing but setting myself up, breaking my body down, and then I done broke it down so much. Now that I'm in my 40s, I'm desperate, I'm alone, I'm sickly now because my health is failing, and I ain't even got nobody to be there to help me. Because I made all these bad decisions when I was younger, even though I had the opportunity 
you know, to make better decisions as I got older, but I decided to keep going forward, even in my 20s and my 30s, because a teenager, you know, there's not immaturity. I was a teenager, like I said, I had fun. Now, I slept with, with people when I was a teenager. That was a teenager, too. We was out there having fun, hanging out with these guys, you know, um, having fun. And so, I can remember that. But now, when I, when I got older, though, my teenager years to my 20s was totally different. My teenager years, yes, I had fun. Probably dated several guys because I didn't know no better. But, of course, I was using condoms. I protected myself. But at that age... You just having fun, you know no better. Then when I got to my 20s, it was over. I, I would start going to school like, uh-uh, I don't want to have sex. <laughs> and because it was, sex was always overrated to me anyway. I was never a big sexual person, you know. Uh, I, and I, plus, also, I didn't like everybody being on me and my body anyway. So in my teenage years, I had my fun, you know what I mean? Because you you young, you just having fun. But when you start getting 20s, you know, start trying to, you know, get yourself educated so you prepare yourself for your future, then, you know, you get a little bit more wiser. And so when I got to my 20s, it was a dumb deal for me. Men weren't even that important to me. What was important to me was my education and preserving my body. You understand? So now in my 30s, okay, I mean, I was dating here and there, having fun. And I like my mama told me, you get a good man, throw him away. Yes, I did. So the man I couldn't have got married, yes, I did throw him away. And it haunted me because my mama was the only one who said something to me. But it was a lady 2,500 miles away, don't even know my mama, and said the exact same thing to me. It was two. So remember, two is confirmation. So if my mama said to me, and this lady, she don't know to say it to me, and if they don't know nothing about my life, the other lady said something to me, so I know God said it to her, okay? She said the truth, you get good me, you threw them away. And then that's when that came to me. I need to do some stuff differently, right? I need to examine myself, and I did. I had to examine myself and work on myself and everything and realize that it was me. <laughs> It was me because you got people want to be with me and want to do these things to me, but I don't want to deal with it. Like, oh, no, I don't know, I want to do that. But not even realize I'm getting older. I'm getting older. And even though I'm turning these people down, I'm getting older. I really need a man or a husband in my life. I'm getting older. And trust and believe me, when I got in my 40s, it hit me. So I, if a female out there tonight, she don't need no man and ain't nothing wrong, she's a blatant lie. You know what I mean? Because in my 40s, I was in here crying. Like, oh, my goodness, this ain't going to work. I can't just be alone like this. I don't need a man in my life. You see what I'm saying? But I just don't want any man. I can get, I could have got a man. I was, I just want to deal with it because I know, you know, uh-uh, that's not the right man. And a good man I did have that I did throw away, I was just having fun. I wasn't in, mature, in my maturity yet. But when I came to my church, I started realizing like, oh my goodness, I probably should have kept one of them, you know, but then when I realized I gone ahead and okay, that was over with. Now, I had to just submit to the father. And give myself to him. Because I knew the only way that I was going to get a loving person was through him. It wasn't going to be on my understanding. It wasn't going to be on no dating site, no internet site. It was only going to come from the father. And that's what happened. All right? So, now, females, don't ever think it's, don't, don't think it's just too late and you're giving up. But if you is allow your body to be a playground, please stop it. You're damaging yourself. Now, no man going to want that. A man wants somebody who, you know, is who is hard to get. You know, um, a man wants somebody who is different, unique, you know. So, um, you know, and, and for more mature. And, you know, a man wants somebody who going to love them and take care of them and cater to them. And I don't see nothing wrong with it. I love catering to my man 24-7. Because, like I told you, my grandma taught me how to cook at 11. And at age, at age 8, she had me, like, paying her bills. Oh, at 8, she had me, she would go back, computer stuff she couldn't even do. And I always make me do it. Go learn how to operate this. Go learn how to do that. So, at 8 and 9, my grandma had me doing so many things with computers and TVs and paying her bills. Hey, you know, she was already teaching me. You know, it's just that when I got my teenagers, you get the... Get feeling a little hot and having fun and energized. And my little boy touch, you be hot to trot. You know what I mean? So then you start probably making these mistakes as a teenager. But I did not forget about my foundation where I came from. You know, um, doing those things, teaching me how to do all these things and cook and clean. You know, she was teaching me, you know, how to take care of them. How to take care of my man. And how to be responsible. How to, how to build, you know. And right now today, hey, what I learned from my grandma and my aunties now, mm, I don't see nothing wrong with it, okay? Because uh, I don't mind cooking for my man. And he be like, I'm hungry. Okay, what you want to eat? Here we go. I make his lunch when he go to work. You know, I, I fold his clothes. You know, if something wrong, I make him a bell. I mean, it just, I me. Mean, you be amazing how men are simple. So it's not hard that these men are simple. They just want you to love them, support them, feed them, and care for them. And I guarantee you, they'll give you everything you want want okay everything you'll be amazing all they want you to do is love them 
and feed them and take care of and cater to them and be submissive to them. What's so hard about that, ladies? What is so hard about being submissive to a king? Because I done gave my man a whole different name, King Black. All right, you guys. So, again, uh, the father forbids a harlot, right? And, again, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, KJV version speaks, says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. God forbid you being a harlot, my dear. Don't let this social media make you feel like you out there selling yourself, you know, for money, prostitution yourself. That's a good thing. In the end, you're going to damage yourself. And you're, and somebody, you're going to damage your body, your health, your mind, your spirit, your everything. So stop being out there allowing yourself to be playground. Be submissive. Get you one man. Allow yourself to cook for him, clean for him, wash for him. You know, have a kid, bam, do it. Do it, it matter. You know what I mean? You're going to get old anyway. You know what I mean? So why not grow old with that person? You know? Why not establish a community? Why not, you know, um, support him, support that kid so he can lead you in the right way? Because if, if the one, even that woman saying, oh, I don't need no man. I'm a strong, independent woman. A man by your side makes you even stronger. She be more powerful with her husband. I am not playing. That woman walk in confidence. That one who got that husband or that or that better half on the side, she walk confidence. She way stronger than a very strong independent woman. Uh, a strong independent single woman ain't got nothing on a married strong woman who got a husband to be independent for. All right? So stop falling for this foolishness. Submit to your husband, honey. Learn how to cook. Learn how to clean. Take care of your man. Cater to him. Love him. Treat him like the king that he is, right? Allow him to cure you. Allow him to provide you. Allow him to raise you. Allow him to teach you. Allow him to walk for you. Allow him to speak for you, okay? Stop thinking you the man and the woman. You're not the man and the woman. You are damaging yourself. It's not It's not meant for you to lead. It's meant for him to lead, okay? It's not meant for you to take on all these things. It's meant for him to do it. That's why you got this big old house and got all these precious things in your life with no man. And I bet you want to give it back now. I'm sure you want to give it back because now you're 40 and 50 years old and you got this big old house, all this money, all this driven. You ain't got no man to be there with you. I mean, because for the most part, you probably want to give it to him anyway. Don't, don't think you're lying because trust and believe when you love your man, whatever you got, you want to share with him. Now you're making all this money, got this big house. What's the beauty of going to this big house and having all these things and you just going there alone every day? Right? Nobody to hold you at night with all these precious things. That's not happy life. That is not happy life that you just succeeded and so professional and now you can walk in and get all this in and you go home every day at night and lay alone with all your beautiful and precious with valuable things that you have worked so hard for as a strong, independent woman. Keep this in mind. The most strong, strongest independent woman is that strong, independent woman who know how to allow her husband to be independent for her. So, if you don't have that better half on your side that's helping you to become a strong and guiding you, then you're not that strong, boo. You are not that strong. In fact, you may be okay in your success, you know, and all that, getting that, what I say, house and all that, cars and everything, but it's not success mentally, physically, and, you know, um, just humbly with your husband. It's not that. Believe you me. All those females that have became successful and have got their nice cars, they now in their nice houses, and now they in their thirties and forties, and they done built themselves and got all this. Now they got it. What they want to do with it now? Give it back because they realized they was bamboozled to do all this and get all this, you know. And now they got it all, and they ain't happy. They ain't got nobody to share it with. Okay, just remember, even though I went to college and got my master's, do you guys? Want to know something about me? My whole motto was always, always to treat my man like a king. And that's why he treated me like a queen. So don't matter. I went to school and I did all that, but no one can never say Latrice thought she was better. Uh, Latrice says, nope. I only went to school and built myself up to be support to my husband. And that's what I did. So whatever I got is his anyway. I never, whatever I worked for, even in my house, you know, whatever I did, it was never for me, really. It was for me to take care of myself and get a house. But I always knew that whatever I'm doing is for me and my husband, you know. So whatever I built, it was always for the father to send my husband in my life, right? So, hey, he can have it all. I can care less as long as he protect me. I can care less. So again, when he came, I'm like, it's like, okay, 
Now I'm complete. So ladies, don't don't get out that mindset, okay? Stop using your body as a playground. Stop letting everybody sleep around with you and everything, okay? Just tan your body up. But learn now to submit, you guys. You got to create this generation, you know, to create nuclear families, right? And not harlot families. It makes no sense. Bring our daughters up, okay, to be queens that's going to support their husband, you know, that's going to push that husband, be the king that he is, so he can take care of the whole community, okay? That's a strong woman. All right, you guys. Um, happy Friday again. Happy 7th to you guys. Love y'all. Bye.